Welcome back to our series on cloud native application development. I am Jamie Lan, a senior consultant for application development at Red Hat. And on this video, we're going to talk about OWASP dependency check. In a previous video, we talked about the OWASP top 10. I'm not going to go over each of these top 10s, uh, but they are the top 10 web application security risk from OWASP. I talked about them in a previous video, and if you have some time, I would recommend looking through them. But in this video, we are going to look at number nine, which is using components with known vulnerabilities. This is just using any component that has a known uh, and well-documented vulnerability currently out there. And what the OWASP dependency check does is it's an analyzer that will analyze all the dependencies inside of your application and compile a report of all the well-known vulnerabilities from data sources around the web. Um, so the OWASP dependency check can be used in a couple different ways. Uh, it can be used through the command line tool, and it can also be used in a bunch of different uh, build automation tools. So there's an ant task for it, uh, a Jenkins plugin, there's a Sonar plugin. Uh, we're gonna be using it through the Maven plugin. So let's go ahead and create uh, and integrate the OWASP dependency check tool with the to-do application that we created during our contract first development. And that should be pretty simple. So in order to do the integration with our Spring Boot application, all we need to do is add the Maven plugin to our Palm file. So inside of our Palm, we're gonna to come to our plugins directory and we're gonna add a new plugin. And it's gonna be the OWASP dependency check plugin. You can see it just does the execution during the check goal, uh, but other than that, it's just the org OWASP dependency check maven. So now we can create our report just by doing a maven verify. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys see this run through. Normally I pause the video uh, so you don't have to watch my thing build, but it builds fairly quickly. Uh, I'm just doing this because when you first do uh, the build with this new plugin, it actually does take a little bit to, to get through because uh, it does a lot of downloads. So I don't want you to be worried about that, um, but it, it, takes, it takes a little while the initial run, uh, but subsequent runs are significantly faster. There we go. And we finished up. And you can see that it does a little report down here and it talks about the CVEs. Uh, CVE is a common vulnerability and exposure. This is how the different data sources actually document the, the vulnerabilities. Um, but it, it has a list of the different dependencies and CVEs that we have in our application. Um, but beyond this, it also creates a nice little HTML report that's a little easier to read. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so if we look inside of our target folder here, uh, we can see this dependency check report.html. And we'll just open a folder to that. And then open that in a browser. So probably the most important link in this report is this how to read the report. And this will actually link back to the dependency check site. And it'll give you all the information on how to read the report. I'm going to go over some basics, but this goes more into details about the different things I'm going to talk about. Um, so the basics of how to read the report is there's a summary section up top. It tells you what all the dependencies are. Um, it tells you the vulnerability IDs. These are CPEs, known as Common Platform Enumerations. Uh, these are just the identifiers that it uses when it searches the different databases. Um, so one thing that's good to do is make sure the dependency and the CPE match up. Uh, that's pretty simple. You can look at 1.6.1, matches up with 1.6.1, et cetera. Uh, and then the rest of this, if you want to learn more, you can read the how to read the report section. Uh, and if you click any of these dependencies, it's going to take you to uh, the detail section. And the detail section will first break down what the particular uh, dependency actually does. So in this case, DOM4J is a flexible XML framework for Java. So it's an XML library. And then it gives you evidence if you want to look at that. Uh, it gives you the identifiers again. And then most importantly, it gives you the published vulnerability information. Now, this first 
uh, item up here is a link. If you click that, it'll actually take you to the database that it pulled the information from, and then you can use that to get even more information on it. Uh, but this guy actually does a pretty good job of breaking down most of the information you're going to need in order to evaluate that vulnerability. So up here, it gives you a basic description of what the vulnerability is and um, some information about it. So we can see here, uh, this only affects versions prior to 2.1.1. Um, it's an injection vulnerability for the element methods, add methods, blah, blah, blah class. And it lets you tamper with XML documents through XML injection. Um, and then you can find out more information from references here. Uh, you can see there's a link to GitHub. Uh, I'm guessing this is probably the fix uh, in case that's relevant to you. Um, and there's also links to other uh, different things that it affects, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you can really kind of dig deep down into what the vulnerability is. Uh, so now let's see if we can fix this vulnerability. Uh, optimally, when you find a vulnerability like this, uh, generally the way that you want to fix it, especially when it says DOM4 version prior to 2.1.1 is to update to the newest version. That should, in theory, fix the vulnerability. So let's look for this DOM for J in our palm. Um, so you can see here, we looked for the DOM for J and we got no results. So that means it's probably the child of one of our other dependencies in here. Um, there's not a huge number, so that's not surprising. So, Let's see if we can find it. So what we're going to do is just do a Maven dependency colon tree, and then we'll grab the five before DOM for J. Okay. So we can see here that it is a dependency of the Hibernate core, but based on the indentation, the Hibernate core is also the dependency of something else. Um, so let's, let's up this to 13. And so we can see the Hibernate core is actually the dependency of the Spring Boot starter data, JPA. Um, and that's currently on version 2.3.1.release. So let's just, take a look at that in our palm.xml. So we'll look for our starter JPA, uh, and you can see currently it's got release version 2.3.1. Uh, now if we look and see, we can see that version 2.3.1 was released um, at this point, and for your guys' information, I'm recording this on July 21st, 2020. Uh, so, this was released just over a month ago as of the recording of this. So it's it's fairly new and it is the newest release. So we're already on the newest release of the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. Uh, the reason I wanted to point this out is because realistically at this point, um, we could override that DOM for J with the newest version inside of here, uh, but there's a decent chance that's gonna break something uh, with a, a jump from 1.6 to 2.2 or 2.1, whichever one it was. Um, so I wanted to point this out because you're not going to be able to solve every dependency. Like you're not going to be able to have um, an application that has zero CVEs associated with it. That is almost impossible. And then a lot of times, uh, you know, you don't want to do that because that's going to be a lot of effort for things that aren't necessarily worth putting the effort into. For example, we can see dom for j has a CVE associated with it. Um, but if we look, there's the Hibernate core, that's the parent of it, and then the Spring Framework boot, that's the parent of it, and neither of those have any CVEs associated with it. So while this maybe is a vulnerability, there's a good chance that the Hibernate core um, is designed in a way where this vulnerability is not relevant since there's no CVE associated with it. You can't make that assumption. There's always some amount of risk associated with uh, letting any CVE through, obviously, or, you know, there's, there's always risk with everything you do. Um, but uh, there's a, you can probably make a, a pretty reasonable guess that, um, 
this particular CVE is not going to affect you since it's from 2018, as you can see by CVE-2018, and the Hibernate Core is still using it, and there's no CVE associated with that, uh, even though it's been two years. So at this point, you, you can probably safely say like, hey, I wanna suppress the CVE. I, I don't wanna see it in my future reports. Um, and that's fairly simple to do. So all you need to do in order to suppress a CVE that you don't think is relevant is click the suppress button, click the completed XML document, and then copy that whole thing. And then we're gonna go back to our project we're going to create a new pro file. We're just going to call it um, OWASP suppression.xml. And then we paste that document in. Uh, now, one thing I want to note is whenever you suppress any sort of CVE, I think it's a really good idea to have some form of documentation. That documentation can be notes here. You can say, um, we have evaluated blah 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 we don't think think it is relevant or whatever so there's actually notes inside of the suppression document so you can self-document it that way or if you have a wikipedia page that you want to document it on but i do think it's good to have some sort of justification as to why you're blocking the cve even if that justification is this is something that we're going to look at in the future um, because we don't have time to uh, fix this now but we can suppress this so it won't show up on future um, things by just creating this XML file. And then we just need to add the XML file's location to our Palms plugin. Um, so here we're going to go back up to our plugin, uh, and specifically our OWASP dependency check plugin. And we are going to add a configuration. And inside of that configuration, we're going to add a suppression file. And we're just going to add our OWASP uh, suppressions.xml. And so this will just point to that file in our base directory. And anything inside that file should be suppressed. So now if we do another quick Maven verify, and this time if you're following along, it should run significantly faster. we should be able to just refresh the report and then our CV 2018 should be gone. Um, yep, there you go. So Don for Jaden just has this one CVE uh, from 2020. This one actually popped up while I was creating this lab about a week ago. Um, so if we wanted to suppress that too, for future suppressions, it's even easier. You just copy uh, the little suppression blurb. You don't click the complete XML document. Uh, and then you just paste it into your XML, rerun verify, and once the verify is complete, uh, refresh, you can see that now DOM for J is gone completely since we've suppressed both the CVEs associated with it. Um, you can also suppress on a CPE level if you want to do that. Uh, so that's the basic idea of how this works. Like I said, you can hook this up into your Jenkins plugin, and then this actually gives you a security score, and you can make builds fail based on a specific security score um, or, or fail if you have any CVEs, if that's what you'd rather do. Um, but it's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, and again, uh, dependency management is, is difficult. I uh, just want to be honest with you here. It's it's hard to to try and keep all these vulnerabilities out of your application uh, to the point where I would say it's, it's pretty close to impossible. Um, so I think documentation a lot of times is going to be your best answer. And just knowing what vulnerabilities exist out there is, is, you know, a really strong step in the right direction, like knowing that you're vulnerable um, from a specific instance. So I hope you found this useful. Um, let us know if you have any suggestions for future content you'd like to see. Thank you.